I love science and we science lovers either enjoy math really enjoy it and want to study engineering physics and so on or else we tend to gravitate towards life sciences a bit unfortunate because things get interesting when math meets biology hi i'm nivedita ayer a grade 9 student in bangalore india and i'm going to use a mathematical principle called the square cube law to explain how animals scale in size it lands a question such as how scary is an 800 pound gorilla Does a cockroach have lungs and how many calories does an elephant consume compared to a guinea pig The square cube law of scaling states that when an object undergoes a proportional increase in size its new area is proportional to the square of the multiplier whereas its new volume is proportional to the cube of the multiplier That's a lot of words so let's break it down The law applies to any object whether it's geometric a banana or an octopus The area goes as square whereas the volume goes as cube Mathematically we can write it down as area proportional to length square and volume to length cube. We can combine these two to express area in relation to volume or the ratio of area to volume. To understand this better, let's look at the simplest of objects, a cube. Volume is length cube, surface area is square. Surface area goes as volume to the power of 2 by 3. If the cube were one centimeter along the edge, then the area is six square centimeter. Volume is one cubic centimeter, and area to volume ratio is six inverse centimeter. Now, if we double the cube length, surface area increases fourfold, but volume increases eightfold, and the ratio halves from six to three. Double it again, volume outpaces area. The ratio is now down to one point five inverse centimeter. As cube length increases, volume increases faster than area. Surface area to volume ratio shrinks. For a cylinder cross sectional area again goes as a square volume as a cube area goes as volume to the power of 2 by 3 area to volume ratio inversely proportional to the radius as the radius increases volume increases faster than area and the ratio decreases a cylinder is a good approximation for the middle segment of a bone the load that this bone can bear its strength depends on its cross sectional area now if this were a gorilla bone say a femur Then the load that it must bear would depend on the weight of the gorilla and thus its volume therefore the strength to weight ratio is essentially the ratio of bone cross sectional area to gorilla volume and this has to exceed 1 for the gorilla to be able to stand up considerably exceed if it has to do more than just stand up the largest male gorillas in the wild weigh about 400 pounds so the mythical 800 pound gorilla would imply a volume factor of 2 the area factor would be 1.59 Therefore the strength to weight ratio for an 800 pound gorilla would put it at a whopping 20% disadvantage. A 400 pound gorilla is menacing, but an 800 pound gorilla would struggle to even stand up. When it comes to standing up, bigger is not better. An elephant can lift only 10% of its body weight, an average person half their body weight, and an ant many times its body weight. Want to be much bigger than an elephant? Then you're better off under water. Standing up is important, but breathing even more so. A cockroach breathes through openings on its surface called spiracles. Hence, its oxygen supply is limited by the surface area, whereas its oxygen that it needs depends on the number of cells, which is its volume. This ratio has to exceed one, and it decreases as size increases, placing an upper limit on the size of the cockroach. Or else, atmospheric oxygen has to be higher as it was in the Carboniferous period. So cockroaches were much bigger then. In the present though bigger creatures like us need lungs which gives breathing surface area the size of half a tennis court cockroaches are small enough to have all the surface area they need for breathing breathing is for metabolism tissue culture experiments with cells from mammals shows that whether the cell is from a guinea pig or an elephant all mammalian cells have the same metabolic rate what happens when millions of these cells come together to form a mammal Mammals are warm-blooded and if we assume that metabolic rate is a function of heat loss therefore its surface area which goes as volume to the power of 2 by 3 an elephant is about 10000 times heavier than a guinea pig assuming approximately equal density the volume factor is also 10000 applying the square cube law we get the area factor as 10000 to the power of 2 by 3 or 0.67 which equals 464 Actual experimental data gives us a power exponent closer to 0.75. So the metabolic factor is not 464 but closer to 1000. The 0.75 exponential relationship is called Kleber's law and we got close to it with just our simple square cube law of scaling. To derive Kleber's law we need to use a more complicated math theory called fractals. It indeed gets interesting when math meets biology. Thank you for watching.